am here. So I'm very happy to kick off the IoT track. Uh, and without further ado, I will hand over to Marco and Philip, who will uh, talk to us about Apache Streampipes. Um, yes, is yours. exactly. I'm just sharing my presentation. Do you see it? Yes. All right. Yeah, and then I think we can start, right? Um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Marco, and um, I'm here with my colleague, Philip. And uh, we're working on Apache Streampipes together with some other colleagues and, um, yeah, some other uh, committers as well. And today we want to talk about democratizing machine learning pipelines using Streampipes. So first of all, we will go over what Streampipes actually is. Afterwards, we will also show you two demos. The first one will show you how you can uh, use existing machine learning models in Streampipes. And in the second one, we show you how you can build machine learning models with Streampipes and then use them um, on data streams. So you see the next slide, I guess. Um, yeah, what is Streampipes? Streampipes is an open source industrial IoT toolbox, which enables non-technical users to analyze data streams. So we focus on non-technical users, which are, uh, uh, for example, engineers or also computer science um, uh, people who are not necessarily um, data scientists. And Streampipes enables them to connect to different data sources and then to analyze the data and create knowledge uh, from the data and exploit it. So we have different components in, in our software. Um, the first one being Streampipes Connect, um, which is a convenient tool with which you can um, connect to different kinds of data sources, which can use uh, different protocols such as MQTT. Um, after you've done that, you have a pipeline editor in which you can uh, easily create data analysis pipelines from these connected data sources. Um, then you can create dashboards on which you can track certain KPIs, for example. Um, but we also have a data explorer. So um, you could, for example, um, save the, the data in a database and then go to the data explorer in order to see what's going on in the data but also to create labels to the data for later training of machine learning models, for example. At last, you can also create notifications. For example, um, a notification that a certain KPI exceeds a th certain threshold so that you don't have to uh, yeah, keep the, uh, stare at the dashboard all the time, but rather get the notifications if an interesting event occurs. So yeah, what are the um, does, uh, what are the uh, what's a good application for streampipes? Um, streampipes is targeted at um, industrial IoT, and in industrial IoT here, for example, a production line. We have many different components in such a production line, which use different messaging protocols. So each component collects sensor data, and it um, yeah, then sends it, for example, via MQTT or ROS or uh, REST interfaces. And the goal is then to extract information that, should, that is actually usable or yeah, important uh, from, this, from these raw data streams. And that's exactly where Streampipes uh, comes into play. Um, Streampipes, with Streampipes, we can uh, connect to all these different data sources, create data analysis pipelines, and then observe different KPIs. So, yeah, how does Streampipes work? As mentioned, we have Streampipes Connect, where you have more than 30 adapters um, with which you can connect different data sources. 
For example, we support uh, OPC UA, MQTT, uh, ROS, REST interfaces, and many more. And you can always also implement your own um, adapters if needed. Then uh, you can leverage many different pipeline elements. Uh, for example, data processors, which um, yeah, uh, apply a certain function on the data, um, but also data sinks, which um, we'll go into later as well. But basically, they can be uh, databases or uh, yeah, other message brokers that forward the data to another component. Yeah, this way we can create distributed applications. And um, yeah, usually these pipeline elements are all uh, microservices which are standalone. And yeah, you can you can run Streampipes instances on many different uh, systems and architectures such such as uh, x86 or ARM, uh, Linux, Mac, um, Windows. We use Docker um, to encapsulate the application. Yeah, and finally, you can hopefully realize uh, cool use cases with Streampipes, such as uh, continuous asset monitoring and also to um, calculate certain KPIs on the live data stream in um, a timely manner. So, um, and the third point we actually want to show you today, um, namely how you can use machine learning models with Streampipes uh, for example, on sensor or image data. Yeah, Streampipes uh, consists of four main components. The first one being Streampipes Connect to connect data sources. Then also you can build dashboards, uh, which is shown in the top right, where you can build simple user interfaces to observe um, and or to track certain values of your raw data, but also your analysis result. Um, then you can create notifications which notify you about, about um, events of interest. And finally, which is still in beta, um, we have the data explorer, which allows you to quite easily explore the data stream, apply labels to a large number of observations at the same time, um, which and afterwards you can export the data, for example, in order to train your machine learning model. Um, yeah. And so next I want to show you um, how you actually build such a data analysis pipeline in Streampipes. You see the user interface on the right side. Uh, it's called the pipeline editor. In the top part, you have the different uh, pipeline elements that you can actually use your, to build your pipeline. And in the bottom part, you have like a, a, draw, a piece of paper on which you can draw your pipeline. And uh, in stream pipes, pipelines start with um, a connected data stream. For example, you, know, you have a certain sensor, you said, okay, communicates with MQTT you connected it to Streampipes with Streampipes Connect, then it appears in the uh, data streams section and you can drag it into your uh, pipeline editor. And such a data stream is simply an ordered sequence of events, uh, which is provided by Streampipes Connect and can then used in further Streampipes uh, 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 process, processing elements. Next, uh, you can connect these data sources with uh, different data processors, depending on what kind of pipeline you want to build, depending on the analysis that you want to do. And a data processor is simply a configurable function that is executed on one or more input event streams, um, for example, a filter or a merge and which then outputs an output event stream. This way you can plug together different um, pipeline elements into a sequential data analysis pipeline. Finally, we provide data sinks, which are 
for example, databases in which you can just store your data, but also, um, for example, the dashboard sync in which you can then build interactive dashboards. Um, but we also provide third party things such as a Kafka sync or a ROS sync with which you can then uh, send your the data that you that you send through your pipeline to other components in your distributed system. Yeah, Streampipes is a microservice architecture. Um, so behind the UI, you actually have a microservice which handles all the pipeline management, for example, starting stopping the pipeline. Then um, you have all these different pipeline elements which um, yeah, apply the function to the, to the input. Um, for example, a trend detector or classifier or, and so on. Um, these are all microservices and they communicate with a, the, a message broker. Um, and at last, you have all these other microservices in, the, in your uh, Streampipes Connect, where you, for example, have a MQTT microservice, which can um, uh, attach to uh, data sources that communicate with MQTT. And yeah, the message broker just, um, yeah, let's all these um, microservices communicate with each other. All right, um, yeah, that's Streampipes. And next we want to show you um, how you can actually use a machine learning model that you've trained offline in Streampipes. Therefore, you would usually use the Streampipes file API for, with which you can upload your model and um, afterwards you can wrap it inside a data processor and then the model is available in your pipeline editor. This allows you to exchange your model quite easily. So if, for example, you um, found a better model, you can simply re-upload a better model and then use it in the pipeline editor as well. And with that, I'm, I would hand over to Philip, who will show you the demo. So hello and also warm welcome from my side. Thanks for joining our talk today. So I will present a demo what Marco just showed you or gave you the technical background. So here I have a Streampipes instance. And now in the first step, we want to connect a new data source. So I have a little sensor box over here. And previously we trained a machine learning model that can detect what is happening to the sensor. So if the sensor is lying still, if someone is shaking it, or even if it is thrown around. So the sensor could, for example, be put in a box and we could monitor how the box was handled on the transportation way. In the first step in Streampipes, you always have to connect new data sources. To do that, you can navigate to Streampipes Connect. And here we have a rich set of different protocols and formats which are already included. So here we have Apache Kafka, but if you go down, we can also see different industrial protocols like MQTT, which is often used in industry settings, and also integrations for PLC for X. So you can directly connect to an S7 um, PLC and read data out of it. But as Marco mentioned before, you can also connect, for example, the robot operating system. So we have a generic API in the background. So if you have your own sensor or sensor type, you can easily implement new sensors or adapters with our software development kit. For the demonstration, I want to connect the sensor box over Apache Kafka. So I select the Kafka adapter and I start the configuration. So this top uh, Kafka instance is not authenticated. So everything is running in Docker. So I can use Kafka as the DNS name. Um, you can also use an IP address of your Kafka cluster and I provide the port um, of this Kafka topic, and then the system connects to the Kafka cluster and suggests all the different topics which are available. So here we have the topic of the acceleration data and we select it. Next, we want to define the event schema. So a user has to provide the format of the data that is transmitted. In this case, these are JSON objects. 
Now we are reading some background data um, in the system. So we start a connection to our Kafka cluster, get some um, sample information, and we do this for all the different kinds of data sources so that the user gets um, a suggestion of the event schema here. So in the first step, we need to configure it. So we need to define that timestamp here is a Unix timestamp, so you can edit individual properties and select uh, and mark it as a timestamp. Additionally, we can also add some semantic information. So we have an acceleration sensor with X, Y, and Z values. And to tell the system that those values are included, you can um, use a background ontology, which we use um, to select those values. So for the X value, I define that it is an acceleration X value. And for the Y and Z, I will do the same. And once I've done that, we can use this information later during the pipeline modeling to provide suggestions to the user which pipeline elements or algorithms are compatible. Another example would be if you perform a geo operation, you would need some latitude and longitude information in your data. So um, once I configured the event schema, you can click on next. Then you can provide a name to the adapter <laughs> and start it. So the sensor is called XDK. So I select this name and I start the adapter. And now you get some live data. And if I shake it, you can already see that the values change in the UI. Now, if I navigate to our pipeline editor, you can see a new data source of this um, sensor. So you can also get a description where we see how the event schema looks like, and you can always have a look at some sample live data from the sensor. Then if you want to um, model a pipeline, you can select the sensor via a drag and drop like interface and put it into our pipeline assembly. And as we stated before, we want to apply a machine learning model who detects what the state of the sensor is. So therefore, I navigate to the data processors. And here we have a wide range of different kinds of processors. Those can be simple ones like filters or aggregations or time patterns. But we all, you can also include your own machine learning model. And before, we trained the model that detects uh, the partial activity of the sensor. And if we connect that, um, we already get the configurations pre-configured. So this is why I selected before what the semantic type of the individual properties is. So the system can auto select them here. So for example, if you would want to um, apply this sensor on uh, this algorithm on a temperature sensor, you would get an error and because they, the elements are not compatible. Once we um, connected our um, processor, we want to visualize it so you could send the results to another system or you can um, show it on a live dashboard. Give it also a name and you save it. We also have an internal data lake and Dominic and Patrick will give a talk about um, this topic later. So if you're interested, join their talk. We will show the newest version because uh, which we just um, implemented and put into our development branch. Once you've um, configured the pipeline, you can save and execute it. So you save the pipeline and give it a name. And you can directly execute it. Now the individual algorithms are executed in the background and you can also see where they are running. So in this instance, they run on the same host, but they could also run um, distributedly on different um, servers. If I now navigate to our live dashboard, we are already prepared a sample dashboard with some um, test data. Then we can add a new visualization here. And here you see the pipeline, which I just created. Then you can select what kind of visualization you want to have. So you can have a table, or in this case, we want to see the state, so the last value of the event. We select single value, and we can select the activity fields from our event, which was calculated by our machine learning model, and you can create it. And if I now take the sensor in my hand and I shake it, you see that it's shook, and if I hold it still, um, it is normal. And also, if I throw it, it says, OK, sensor fell down. And that's how you can integrate uh, machine learning models which act on sensor data. Um, but you 
can't only um, use sensor data. You can also use image data, and that's what I want to show in the second demo. So therefore, I navigate back to our pipeline editor. And here I already integrated some sample data from a camera, which is filming a box with those industrial filters in it. So also to connect new cameras, it is as simple as I showed before. You just um, give the endpoint of the camera and then an adapter is instantiated automatically and you get this event stream with the image data. And we pre-trained a machine learning model, so some neural networks who are capable of detecting the location of the filters. And you can also use different kinds of models. If you have an own object which you want to detect, you can also include this. Again, you have to select the data stream. And now we want to select the object detection. So here we have a processor that detects objects in image streams. So we, we require an image. And we need to define what kind of objects we want to detect. So behind those configurations, we have a pre-trained neural network. So this one here is trained to detect filters. And we save it. And now we detect the location of the filters within our image stream and we apply it to our event um, with an array of the different kind of locations. So now we could, for example, count them, but for the demo, I want to put an overlay over them so we see where the model detected those, um, those filters. So we have an enrichment component that enriches um, the image. And it puts an overlay over the image so we see where um, the filters are. This component is also already pre-configured, so I can directly save it. And again, we want to visualize it in our live dashboard. So we select this one here and store it. I'll give it another name, image, and I'll save it. And now we can start the pipeline again to see the result in our live data. So I start the pipeline. Now the individual services are triggered in the background and are up and running. And if I navigate back to the dashboard, I can add a new visualization that contains um, the image with the edit location. So here, this time I select an image visualization. Then I select the image from our data stream and give it a name. And I can create it. And now you can see the results. So I can save it. And in this case, we are only visualizing it, but for, of course you could also use the result in a pipeline and perform some calculations. So you could define a rule that says in one box, you always need three filters, or the filters must be in a certain location within the box. So that was it so far from our first demo, and I will give my screen back to Marco, and he will explain how you can also train your own models and integrate them. All right, yeah, thank you, Philip. Um, yeah, this was the demo about how you can yeah, use existing models. Um, but yeah, we'll also give you a sneak peek now how you can actually build your own model with Apache Stream Pipes. This feature is uh, um, still yeah, very new. So um, it's not included in the current version, but we still want to give you a sneak peek. Um, so how can you build your own model with Apache Stream Pipes? Basically, we handle three main cases. Um, so, I mean, Stream Pipes is software, software for, for streams. So uh, one very common use case is forecasting. Um, where you have a, a certain past stream and you want to know how will this stream uh, develop in the future. Um, this is the first use case that we're, uh, that we're developing. But the second one is uh, what we call sliding window classification. Here you basically have a sliding window um, which slides over the data and the goal is here to classify the newest instance. This is very useful, for example, if you want to find out if a certain machine is active or not, 
you could um, classify the sliding window and then get a label for the last instance if the machine is currently producing a part or it, if it's currently resting. And in the third uh, type of classification, which we call session window classification, you can kick out a certain time frame and then run a classifier on this on this session. So how do uh, point two and three relate to each other? Um, you could, for example, um, use sliding window classification to label the certain the current state of the machine as active inactive so an active uh, part is produced in inactive the machine uh, does not do anything and then you just take this session of where the machine was active and run a classifier uh, which then for example tells you if the part that you produced is in is a good part or a faulty part. And the steps that you would have to do in order to create such a model with stream pipes would be, of course, first connect your data sources and then um, store the raw data in a database, for example, a InfluxDB. And um, here, then you can access the data in the data explorer and provide labels to the data. So you could, in the data explorer, use drag and drop basically to label uh, your observations as active, inactive, or faulty, not faulty. Uh, and then after you've done that, you can directly use the labeled data in the AutumnL component. In the AutumnL component, we take the previously labeled data and you basically select what kind of uh, analysis you want to do. So do you want to do forecasting or sliding window classification, session window classification? And then we run automated machine learning in order to obtain the best model. Um, so this is um, automated, especially well suited for, yeah, users that are not no data scientists. And after you've done that, um, your the best model that was found by StreamPipes is directly available in the pipeline editor. So you can then drag it into your assembly area and um, create, use it in a, in a data analysis pipeline. And yeah, this is the last demo that we want to show you today. So I would hand over back to Philip. Thank you, Marco. So I will share my screen again. So here we have the pipeline editor again. And to prepare the training, we have connected some sample data and um, stored it in the data lake. So if I navigate to the data explorer, um, I've already prepared a data view with some sample data. You can see the acceleration sensor data. And here you can see the X, Y, and Z values. And if I click uh, activate the label, you can also see that we already prepared some labeling. So um, to add those label labels, you can either use uh, an external signal. So for example, a button where you, when you record the data, but you can also do it in here via drag and drop like, like interface. Here in the beginning, you can see that the sensor was shook, which can be seen quite easily. And it is harder to detect where, this, where the sensor actually was thrown. So in this point in time, someone threw the sensor. And it would be quite hard to model such a scenario in a rule or in a pipeline with some declarative rules. So the idea is that we use this label training data, train a machine learning model with a framework, and then um, deploy the trained model in a pipeline. And to do that, you can navigate to the apps. And here we have the model training service. And here you see the three different types of machine learning models, which Marco explained before. So we have forecasting, sliding window classification, and session window classification. And to detect the state of the sensor, we want to perform a sliding window classification, meaning we want to classify each event in which kind of state the sensor is. So we select it. Then we have to select the data set, which we've labeled before. So here we have the shake data. 
and you can also define a step size. So if you want to classify each event or if if you're not um, interested in the full frequency, you can also say that the offset of the sliding window should be higher. So you can also, for example, go every 10 steps or every 10th event, you want to calculate a result. Then you go on next. Then you have to define what the label is that you want to predict. So the label in our data stream or in our um, database. Then you go further. Then you have to define which is the timestamp column or the timestamp property and which properties are relevant for the training. So for example, um, it could also be that you have a temperature sensor in here. So a user can deselect that and only focus on the X, Y, and Z values because they are relevant to detect if a sensor was shook or not. And the temperature, for example, would be irre irrelevant. And this also improves the training speed later on because the model doesn't have to focus on all the unnecessary information. Then you can um, click on next and give it a name, demo shake, for example. And you can trigger the training job. Now it says that the training was started successfully. And if you navigate to the jobs, you get an overview and you see that a job was deployed and is running. And once the first iteration is complete, you also get a suggestion when the training uh, will be finished. So I already prepared that before the talk. So if I navigate to our result view or the monitoring view, I can show you the previously trained model. So this has the same configurations as I showed you before. And the training took about two hours for this data set. And here you get um, three confusion matrices to see the results, how well um, the model performed, which was found automatically. So on the left, we have the training data. In the middle, we have the um, validation data. And on the right, we have the test data. You can also see all the different kinds of models which were found by the AutoML framework. So you can also navigate um, through the different models and see if another model fits better for your use case. So we also have the variable importance down here. So you see what an impact of a variable, uh, what an impact a variable has on your result. So for example, if um, it doesn't make sense to you or you see that here we want to take a sh detect a shake and the temperature is um, within this important variable, you could also select another model. Once you've selected the best model, it becomes available within stream pipes. So if I navigate back to the pipeline editor, you can use it as I showed you before in the first demo. So here we have our data stream again. Again, you can go to the um, data processors and there's a generic processor with a time series classification and you can connect it. And within the configuration, you can select the trained model um, from before. So here is the um, shake all features was the model which you saw the result here. And so you can select it and save it and now use the result within your pipeline. So you have the loop is completely closed from connecting the machine, gathering some sample data, training a model and directly deploying it on new data. All right. Thank you, Philip. And um, yeah, this is the end of our talk. Um, we hope you liked it. Um, we are always happy if you leave us a star on GitHub. And you can also reach us um, through the mail mailing list or via the website. So um, we're happy if you reach out to us. And now, yeah, we're happy to answer any questions. Ah, there's one question in the chat. The chat, um, very interesting system. How does it deal with missing data? Um, what exactly do you mean by missing data? So in the adapter layer, um, we assume or can check if the data is available. So the model itself assumes that the data is coming. Ah, okay. So um, for example, a sensor fault, um, in the deployment, we also include a change detector. So for the automated trained models, um, we detect a change in the distribution of the data, for example, and then we can notify someone. Um, if you have your own model, um, you still need to implement it or integrate it into um, 
the agent and uh, use our software development kit. And in that case, the developer can decide um, how to deal with such situations. But in general, we assume that the data is coming. And if the data is not coming, we notify someone to check the system. So um, we assume that the data we have for training, that we also have it later on during the deployment. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, so the question is what kind of ML tooling we are using? Um, so this depends. So a developer is quite flexible. Um, for the first part of the demo, we um, used uh, TensorFlow and uh, H2O for the um, time series data, but uh, our um, agents or processors are general, so you can use any framework that you want to train and deploy your models. And also for the second uh, demo, we use um, as for some parts H2O and also train and serialize the models with H2O to um, get them from our training service into the system. Thanks for your question. Um, yeah, we are working, or the community is working on a Python wrapper. Um, the issue is open for quite some time, so if you're interested in the topic, we would also be happy to get your feedback. Um, so yeah, it is open for quite some time. We have a, a working prototype, but it's not completely ready for usage yet. But in general, it is possible because the individual processors are um, are independent of each other. So as Marco showed you, we have this microservice architecture um, decoupled by a message broker. So we could also support other languages or programming languages. The only thing um, you need to do is implement the interface and the data model. Uh, and thank you, Patrick, um, yeah. also forwarded the issue. And so the first question is, is there any system to monitor the availability of the pipeline? Are they running or not? Maybe some alert system if a pipeline is down. That's also a very good question. Uh, we are currently working on that um, to detect it. So uh, recently we added um, a functionality that once a system is restarted, we also ensure that um, all the pipelines are started up again. And also if there is a problem, you can always restart the system. Um, and all the pipelines are then um, fixed. In some cases, uh, we currently do not detect it, but we are working on that so that we get a notification if one of the microservices is getting down and that we at least get notified. But our goal is also to automatically restart the service then. And the second question, I think you, did you do a user study on that? Um, yes, it was part, part of my research and assumption is that the user knows something about data science, so um, it must be known what um, a machine learning models are and that there's a difference between supervised and unsupervised machine learning, but no programming skills are required and also no further knowledge about what kind of machine learning models there are and what kind of parameters are required to configure the training. So you need some basic knowledge also for modeling the pipelines. You don't need to be a software developer, but you need to know what an event stream is and that an event by an event is processed. Um, but if you know that, then you can also use the system. Yes. And for example, if you, if you have a custom protocol with which you want to connect your data sources, you might have to code a little bit to in order to um, yeah create the adapter uh, and to be able to connect to the data source then but apart from that um, this 
style um, you, uh, programming experience. We also have a, in case you have program, ex prog uh, program experience, uh, we have a JavaScript um, processor as well. So if you want to do quick cust custom, um, apply quick custom functions on the data, you can also use this, but then you would also have to have some coding experience. We are also always interested in requirements of the community. So if you have a specific requirement, you can always write on the mailing list and we can talk about it there. There's also a dedicated user mailing list which focuses on such topics. Then uh, finally, um, how accurate does the labeling need to be? Um, so of course, the more accurate, the better. Um, but in my in my experience, it's, it's quite convenient to do it in the data explorer. And um, yeah, if there are a few instances wrong labeled, for example, at the start of a certain event or at the end, um, the model will still. Marco, I think we can't hear you anymore. I. Oh, I can I can hear you. Okay, maybe it was my internet connection. Could you hear me? Yeah, now you're back. Okay. All right. Are there any more questions? All right. Uh, yeah, I think also our time is up. It's 540. So uh, yeah, thank you for joining. It was a pleasure. And we hope to hear from you. Yeah, also thanks from my side. And the next talk um, will also be about stream pipes prepared by our colleagues, Patrick and Dominic, who are also in the chat. So maybe you can see us there. And if you have questions, you can also write them in the chat there. I will be there. Great then. Bye-bye and see you.